everybody, welcome to Cake Tastic Cakes. It's Jen, and I'm going to show you how I put together this Paw Patrol cake here featuring rubble as well as how to make rubble out of gum paste. All right, to make our rubble, we're going to first start with his bulldozer. So I am taking yellow gum paste, I've got a lot of it, and I'm going to make a rectangle, a nice thick rectangle. I'm going to recommend you start on the smaller side with your rectangle because as we build this bulldozer, it becomes pretty darn large. I even went back and hollowed out that um, rectangle that you see me squaring off there with my paddles just because it was just starting to get so big and heavy, I had concerns. So just be aware, okay, this is a big thing. All right, now I'm taking two different size circles there and I'm going to be making the treads of the bulldozer. I saw, you saw me hold up those circles to the rectangle there and I just needed to get the idea of the spacing on it. You want a larger circle in the back, the smaller one in the front, and you want to give yourself like a little lip uh, kind of around the imprint of the circles. That's going to become the whole mechanism for the tread and everything. And I'm going to use my marker lid there just because I kind of like it. It's weird shaped. And I'm going to make impressions in the center of each circle <laughs> to look like, I don't know, the axle. I don't know the mechanics of a bulldozer. The parts that make the tread go. So once you have it all sized up properly, you're going to flip it over and then trace it to make the other one. Um, this way, if you flip it over, they'll both be going in the right direction, which is always a good thing. So punch it out. Now you've got your two the same size. You're going to have to add the circles. So I'm using the back of, this, of the circle cutters, by the way, just to, so it'll make a thicker imprint. And then I'm going to do the same thing before with the marker. Put a little stamp in the center of each one. I'm like, oh, look, it's like tires, <laughs> except not tires. I don't know what it's called. I don't know. So yes, I'm going to put a couple little extra lines in between because I felt like it was a little boring. And there you go. All right, we already got our bulldozer well begun. Now I'm taking some black gum paste. I rolled it nice and thin and cut a, you know, a little bit thicker of a rectangle than the width of the tread there or the tractor tire thing there. So when we wrap, wrap the tread around it, it will stick out just a little bit. I'm putting some marks on the back to make it look more like actual tread. Use a little bit of water and my knife and I'm going to wrap it around so it comes up about halfway to the front and the back. Okay, so again, it's going to be uneven. You want it bigger in the back. That's a good thing. So it's good to be uneven in this case. And also when you place it, have the back and if, you, if it ends up that it's a little longer than the width of your rectangle, make it stick out in the back, not the front. Okay, just, just a little heads up there. So do the same thing for the other side. Roll out your black, put your little imprints in it to make it look like tread wrap it around the yellow part of the of the uh yeah bulldozer and put some water on it stick it into place okay so see not too bad already it's looking better i took some yellow gum paste now i rolled it out just as thin as the black tread before and i'm basically making like bumper covers or i don't know what they're called we're going to call them covers for the tread on each side so i just made a long rectangle measured it out it's going to go over top of the lip of the tread on the front and the back just a little bit. That way it'll it'll cover it up so it won't look awkward that the black doesn't go all the way around or anything. Just kind of wrap it around. You'll see I'm going to make sure it lines up, press it down. There we go. Okay. So now we've got the mobility of the tractor or the bulldozer established. I keep saying tracker, tractor, bulldozer. It's a bulldozer. Okay, now we're going to do the bucket on the front, or the shovel, I don't know, again, forgive me. All right, so I have my square. It's a little bit smaller than the original rectangle, so I'm gonna trim it so it doesn't go any higher than the front there, okay? And I want it to have room on either side of the square because when we add the rest of the shovel part, it's going to need the room to sit on the front without overlapping onto the tread or the covers or anything like that. So this is going to be the bottom part. I'm measuring it out so I know where to trim it because I want the top and the bottom there to be the same width. I don't want them sticking out. I'm cutting out two little sections, as you see oh so carefully, to make it look like, you know, how bulldozers have that kind of like forked front there for scooping or whatever the purpose is. I'm sure there's a reason, but it's there. So that's why I'm putting that in. 
and I am going to add a little water. It's sitting on top of a paper towel. I don't know if you realize that too, because I need everything to sit still while I am still able to move it around. I center it, and you can see now that the top, that piece there is sticking out above the top, so I'm going to trim it off again. Just like before, I don't want it to stick out above the top. I want it to be level. And since I raised it up a little bit, it now is not level. But as you can see, there's a little bit of room on either side. This is still a good thing. Now I'm taking another square, and I think it was the same size. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. But uh, I'm going to put it into the edge. You see how it fits in there without getting in the way of the tread or anything? I'm going to measure out the front and the top and cut those out. So I'm going to be left with a rectangle that will fit with the top and the bottom. So it's not going to extend past. I'm going to do one for each side, and it might be a little bit different because, you know, cuts aren't always perfect, and it doesn't always line up perfectly. But now I'm going to use my circle cutter there to take a chunk out of each one, level off that top edge, just cut off that extra so it goes up straight instead of curving, but leave the curve at the bottom just because I like it that way. And those become the sides of our shovel there. See, isn't that nice? And you're going to use some water. Put it against the sides. This is why, again, it's sitting on the paper towel so I can move it all around without it falling apart and making me cry or swear. And then we move on. All right, I'm going to add kind of like a ring around the top now. I'm taking some thicker gum paste, again, just the yellow using a little water, and I'm going to create just a raised area that's going to be sectioned off. This is where rubble's going to end up sitting. And it also raises it up to give me room for the rest of the details, like the logo, and there's um, an arm, I guess, that comes down. You can see it in the picture in the corner there. That comes down from the shovel into the actual body of the bulldozer. So that's what we're doing there. So I made my little, little framework there. And this is going to become the arm. So I took a bean, as you saw, rolled it out. It's a little bit fatter at the top than at the bottom. And I just flattened it and curved it. So there's nothing really special going on here. And then I realized when I put the water on it with my paintbrush, I did it on the wrong side. So it has to go on that side now. So I have to remake it for the right side. So I'm just doing the same thing again. I flattened my little bean there. It's a little fatter at one end, skinnier at the bottom. Bend it so it's like 90 degrees. Make sure they're the same size, which is always a good thing, or as close as you can get it. Add your water, and this time make sure you put it on the right side so that it can attach properly to the bulldozer this time. Now I know that that rubble has like a power drill or something on the back, so I'm just kind of emulating this. It's just a thick square, as you see, a little thick square. Stick it on the back, because otherwise it looks really boring back there. I took a gray, I don't know, you know, cone-shaped piece, putting some lines in it. Basically I'm making a little tiny unicorn horn. And this is still just gum paste, and I'm going to trim off the top so it's a flat edge. Stick it under there. I have a little piece there, you see, just a little another square just to make kind of like a lid to it. I did not follow the design of his bulldozer uh, very carefully or religiously, but you get the feel of it. You know, you definitely don't look at that and think, ooh, nice submarine. You know, you think it's a bulldozer. So that's kind of more of what I'm going with. They're, they're, and I know that their newer vehicles are so detailed and so elaborate. And I just noped my way right out of that one. I'm like, nope, he sits in a bulldozer. And this is a bulldozer. Okay, now we're getting to Rubble himself. We're going to keep him basic. I am not the best when it comes to sculpting Paw Patrol puppies. I'm going to be honest. So I'm going to kind of dumb it down to make it a little more basic. And it'll look good without, you know killing me. <laughs> so I have my yellow cone there, as you see, rounded off at the top. I shoved a lollipop stick down the center of it. Took my two brown pieces, put them in the front there. Those are supposed to be his little le front legs that come out of his vest that he wears. This is his head. It's a white ball, and I smushed down the top, as you saw, with my handle, my paintbrush there. And I'm going to kind of pinch inward or roll inward on see I'm kind of going from side to side there but angled in toward the center that's going to become his muzzle so now I have recessed his eye where his eyes are and his cheeks kind of sit back but his muzzle comes forward so that's what I was doing I'm using this straw that I cut half of it off of so it's kind of like just a happy face to make his little mouth just makes a nice little curve there you want to make sure when you do add his mouth put it up really high on his muzzle. He's got a huge lower jaw and a very small upper jaw. So just be careful of that. 
I'm going to add the brown now to his head. So I'm just making two circles. This part's not hard. I'm making two circles that are a decent size. You know, you can see how it'll wrap around. And then I'm going to just make them longer. I rolled them a little thinner, so now they're more oval shape. And it'll just wrap around each side of his head. It'll center in the front nicely where his eyes will be. It'll wrap around into the back and fold over the top just so nice and tidy that it's it's easy. Like this part used to stress me so much when you had to add the patches for the eyes and everything. It's not bad. It's really not bad. You just make your circles, stretch them out, and stick them on. I'm using my little ball tool here to hollow out two indentations that are going to be his eyes. And his eyes are set kind of low, close to his muzzle, and right in the corner of the brown of each face, each side of his face. So be careful of your location there. I added a little ball of white gum paste into each one. Fill it in. Now I gave him his little black nose. It's just a little triangle. Make sure you put it up high on top of his muzzle too. It sits, his, his nose is all pushed up and up and in toward his eyes. So it's, it, everything sits up high. His mouth's up high, his nose is up high. A couple little black pieces of gum paste for his eyes. Two little highlights, and there you go. Sparkle, sparkle. He's got a little happy face going on there. Now carefully put his head onto his body, with hopefully without distorting it any. And there you go. There we go. He got rubble sitting in his bulldozer. So far, so good. Okay. Now he needs a hat. Now I took a square piece of gum paste that was pretty thick and just kind of rounded off the corners. So match it up so it's a good size for his head. And then when you're happy with it, cut the top of his head off. This is how I cheat when I put hats on things because I am not good at wrapping it around the round head I've already made. So I just cut this top of the suckers off. I just cut off the top of the heads and make the hat flat and then it just sits right on top. This is going to be the brim. It's just more of the yellow gum paste rolled out thin. I use the circle cutter there just to cut a brim of his hat. Square it off a little bit because it isn't actually rounded. Everything with his hat is pretty darn square. And before you put the hat on, which is like when I was like, oh shoot, I forgot this, but I was glad I remembered. He's got his eyebrows, little black eyebrows. So make sure you don't forget those. You can do it after you add the hat. It'll just be more difficult, you know, it'll just be a little harder. So a little water sticks the hat on. Now I'm going to do that center piece. I just rolled out a piece, pretty thin, not too thin, but pretty thin. It's thicker in the front and tapers into the back, kind of like a long stretched out triangle and wrap it around the hat as you see make sure it's flat in the front push up the brim up if it starts to get a little saggy cut off the extra in the back and then we move on to the ears the ears are just literally brown triangles folded over that's it they sit very high they sit up against the side of his hat like right where his head and hat connect that's where they're going to come out and they're going to fold up against the hat so they're small they're triangles just folded over triangles there you go, right? Like, it's not too bad. Okay, now I'm adding a few more details to his bulldozer itself. I rolled out some black gum paste really, really thin. I'm adding a couple of stripes on those arms. And I just put, as you saw, I just held a piece up, tr put little pressure marks where I felt like I should cut, trim it off, put some water on it, stick it on. There you go. Nothing fancy going on here. Do the same thing again. Um, the, I was modeling this bulldozer after a toy rubble that I saw with him with his bulldozer and it had three stripes of black on the arms of the bulldozer bucket or shovel, whichever it is. So that's what I was doing here. I was just kind of copying that idea. So again, there's the three stripes on each side. I felt like the tires were a little boring too. So I ended up going over and tracing out some of it with my food color marker which unfortunately I forgot to record, but it was just tracing out the indentations I made. I'm adding a little stripe of orange gum paste to either side, because remember we had to build this up so we had room for all this stuff too. So I've got a little stripe on either side. And once it hardens, I had to let it sit for a little bit. I'm going to just freehand the logo, his little symbol on there. So you got the typical shield with a bone going through it. And in the center, it's a wrench. So it's just a wrench sticking straight up with the little symbol in the center of it. I just put a circle because it's tiny and you can't tell anyway. <laughs> now I'm just going to draw a little Paul symbol inside a shield on his helmet. And there you go. He's good. Okay, put him aside. Let him dry. He's going to need a couple days to dry. No kidding. I'm being serious. Like a couple days. Okay, so you need to make him in advance. Now as far as the cake goes, I had a cake. 
This is a six inch. I made two of them, so there's technically four layers. Um, I dirty iced it, stuck it in the fridge, so it got nice and chile chile. Brought it back out, and now I'm doing my second coating on there. And I'm just using some white icing because I was rather uninspired at this point and didn't really know what I was going to do with it because sometimes I just, <laughs> I just wing it. I'll be honest, I wing it sometimes. So I am putting my icing on nice and thick. I'm smoothing it out as best I can. I've mentioned in other videos, if you've ever seen them, that I am not the best icing smoother person in the world. However, I do try, so I get the E for effort. So I did the best I could here, smoothed it all out, stuck it back in the fridge and chased my husband away because he was showing me pictures he printed that you saw flopping on the background there. Now, I am using this um, squeeze bottle basically version of melted chocolate to make a drizzle. It's a yellow drizzle. I just drizzled all around. The brand is Roxy and Rich and I gotta say I freaking loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. It ain't cheap. I'll be honest here, it ain't cheap. But it's even, it drizzles well, it smooths out really well. I was just amazed that I was struggling before when there was this easy hack mode that I could just activate and there you go. Now getting back to the cake part, I took some colorful beads. I've got orange and gold and yellow and a deeper orange and I just stuck them on my drizzles here and there just to add a little color, a little sparkle, a little shine to my cake. And now I'm going to add the child's name. Her name is Addie. It's short, of course. Addie is her nickname. And so I needed four letters, so I cut out four squares. I only showed you three. I'm cutting them out kind of in the Paw Patrol style. If you look at the logo where it says Paul, you know, in, it's in light blue with a yellow background. And so that's what I'm trying to do here with her lettering. I have the four squares that I start with because that way my letters are all going to be the same size. And then I just cut them out as best I could to make it look Paw Patrol style. You know, there are lots of things you can Google online. If you want to see different letterings, people will work on the whole darn alphabet and numbers for any really theme you could think of. And yeah, you could copy it from there. So for my A, I cut out the bottom part of it, but I'm putting a little paw on the, on the top, just like in the paw of Paw Patrol. So I made a little jelly bean shape there, pressed it on, add three little white beads, press those on. And this is gum paste, by the way. I'm sorry if I didn't mention it. And also, you could use fondant for these. These are letters that are just going on the side, so you could do that if you wanted to. I would be okay with it. Not that you need my approval. But anyway, I stuck them on some yellow gum paste that I rolled out really thin, carefully tracing out around each letter so that a little border of the yellow shows. Again, just like the PAW on the Paul logo has it. And then take your yellow away, and then you're going to be ready to stick it on the cake. Now when I add words or lettering to my cakes, I always start in the center with the middle letter, putting it right in the center and then go outward from either side. Since my Addy is a four letter word, I stick the two middle letters on at the same time and then go out from either side. And right there, I had to move one of the beads because my drizzle was a little too long, but no big deal. You just pop it off and eat it <laughs> if you want. Now I felt like it needed some more color, so I took some of my colored gum paste that I use and I'm going to cut out a big circle and three little circles and then make paw prints out of it. And I made a green, a blue, a yellow, and I made a pink, but the pink didn't look right. It was too light colored and it just didn't look right. So I ended up making a red. And as you can see, I stuck a paw print on either side of the cake. It's hard to see, but there, there, there they are, see? And I ended up, I'm sorry, I didn't get rid of the pink. I got rid of the yellow because there's already so much yellow on the cake that it just didn't stand out well enough. So I took it down, put up a red, figured that looks better, and then I thought, you know, it looked better even more. So I took the same color gum paste, and again, for these, you can use fondant if you want, and made dog bones, and I made two straight cuts across, as you can see, and my hand is blocking it, but all I did was make the top of a heart on either side. So it's got the two little bumps on either side, two straight cuts in the middle, and you've got yourself a doggy bone. Ba bam It's not hard. You can do this on your own without a template or anything. I have faith. So I made a bunch of doggy bones, stuck them on. Here comes rubble after a couple days of drying. That's just a handful of candy rocks. Um, the big ones are jelly bean-like. The small ones are delicious and chocolate with a crispy shell on the outside. I love them. I just piled them up in front of his bulldozer to make him look like a little pup-in-action kind of a th scene there. 
adjust them so they look pretty and they don't look weird because, you know, it matters to the child who was turning four, I think. <laughs> she was little. But there you go. A nice, simple drizzle Paw Patrol cake featuring rubble. So I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe. It really does help me out. I've got a lot of other videos out there as well as other Paw Patrol videos. So check those out too. And as always, thank you for watching Cake Tastic Cakes.